What's going on guys, Austin Zayback here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the five things that you need to do before you buy your first rental property. So I'm an active real estate investor who's consistently looking for good rental properties. And I'm actually standing right now in front of a rental property that we just renovated and we're about to rent out to a tenant. So the first thing that you need to do before you go and you even look for a rental property, and I know it's super cliche and it's probably a little boring, so I apologize and I'll try to keep it short, but that is to go ahead and build your credit. Building your your credit is crucial when you're going to buy a rental property. You're getting into real estate. I mean, anything you do in the world of real estate is going to eventually revolve around how good your credit is. If you have high debt on your credit cards, then looking at that debt and ultimately paying that debt off is probably a good idea. Credit card utilization plays a massive role in not having good credit. If you have $10,000 in total credit limit, but you maintain an $8,000 balance, then your utilization is at 80%, and that'll ultimately drop your credit and make it really tough for you to ultimately do anything in the real estate industry. And obviously there's a lot of variables when it comes to credit, such as your credit history, your credit utilization, and all sorts of other stuff. But I encourage you to take a good look at your credit before you even look at buying a rental house and make sure that you have your credit 100% dialed in. The better credit you have will allow you to get a better interest rate when going to buy your house. And then ultimately that'll just make all the numbers a whole heck of a lot better. Maybe you need to look at your credit and you need to do a balance transfer on your credit card over to you know some sort of credit card or something like that with a higher limit that will ultimately allow you to have a lower interest rate and then just in, in general get rid of any bad debt that you have. Bad debt is ultimately no good right you want to have good debt and a lot of people will talk about that and they'll talk about how real estate you know when you go and you get a mortgage a conventional loan on a piece of real estate that is ultimately not bad debt because you can get a really low interest rate that is ultimately lower than inflation and then you can ultimately make cash flow and you can build your wealth. So I just encourage you you know overall to look at your credit and I have a lot of videos on my channel so again I'm not going to dive into it too much but really make sure that your credit is dialed in before you come and you look at real estate or you go to look at a rental property. The second thing you need to focus on is location. Location is everything in real estate. And I'm sure you've heard before, location, location, location. And the reason that they say that is because if you're in a bad location, then ultimately it's just gonna kill the deal. You never wanna buy a house in a location that you wouldn't live in yourself. So if you're looking around and you're trying to figure out where to buy a house and you wouldn't live there, then I highly suggest that you don't buy a rental property in that location. So whether you live in Charlotte, North Carolina, or Atlanta, or California, or Florida, or Texas, or wherever you live, I would really study the market for about a month, maybe two months, and really pick like the top three best locations in the area in which you live near to go ahead and start looking for actual rental properties. For example, the location that we're at right now has really good school districts. We're right next to a park. We're not on a main road. There's no major power lines behind us or anything like that. The crime rate is low, and ultimately, it is just a phenomenal location. We're close to a lot of restaurants. We're close to a lot of shopping. We're close to all kinds of stuff. And all of those things definitely factor in when it comes to looking for a property with a good location. So when you're looking to buy a rental property, you want to make sure you list out all the things that are important to you when going ahead and looking for a rental property. Of course, as it pertains to location, right? So what are those things for you? You know, do crime rates matter to you, right? Do rental rates in the neighborhood matter? Obviously, we're going to talk about that in just a minute and a later point in the video. But, you know, having good rental rates are going to be very crucial to to you actually making sure that you're securing a good deal. You know, being close to shopping centers and malls and freeways, right? Having access to freeways for your tenant is also very important. And also just making sure that everything else is really buttoned up and you totally understand the good locations that you're looking for. And of course, like last but not least, right? Like I talked about, you want to make sure you're not on a main road and that you don't have main power lines anywhere near you. You know, the big things like that will really kill a deal and they'll definitely drop a deal's value by just a significant amount. So now that you've found your location and you've started to really look at houses, you want to go ahead and you want to really go start actually walking properties. The best thing that you want to do is you really want to walk multiple different properties before you go ahead and you pull the trigger. You really want to familiarize yourself with the different properties that you're looking at in that particular location. And then you want to really start to look at the little things on those particular properties. So what I really like to do is I like to go, I like to just schedule maybe like 10 properties to look at in a day. And then I'll go out and I'll actually literally get out of my car and I'll tour the property. And typically when I'm doing that, I'm really wanting to make sure, especially on my first rental property, that the bones of the property 
property, you're in really good shape. I'm really looking at all the major items such as the roof and the foundation, the air conditioner, any of the main things that could cause big, big problems down the road. Because on a rental property, you really don't want to be replacing the roof. And if you have a big crack or something like that in the foundation, that really isn't something you wanna probably deal with, especially not on your first couple of rental properties. Now, obviously you can definitely buy a property that has a roof issue or a foundation issue, but you have to get the property at a much bigger discount to make sure that you don't go over on your numbers. So typically, again, just go out to the properties, walk around and make sure that there's no major items that are wrong with the property. And again, a lot of times you can make sure, again, with just a naked eye and a little bit of common sense that there's nothing major wrong with the property. You know, when you're walking through the house, you want to look at the ceilings and the roof line and make sure there's no major water damage. Make sure none of the sheetrock is like hanging down or anything like that. Now, obviously you can hire a property inspector, okay? A professional property inspector. And I definitely recommend that you do that at some point before you go ahead and buy the property. But you probably want to do that a little bit later on down the line when you're a little bit closer to actually pulling the trigger on that exact property. You can typically find a really good property inspector for a couple of hundred dollars. So I definitely recommend that you do that before you you actually buy the house, but you don't want to get multiple properties inspected if you don't have to. So I'd at least narrow down your search all the way again from the location, then to the actual property. Make sure you go out, you walk the property, you eyeball it, make sure it looks good in your opinion. And then once you kind of confirm that it looks good in your opinion, then you can go ahead and hire an actual property inspector. The fourth thing that you really want to make sure that you do, and you do not want to mess this up, okay? This is extremely important and you have to do this no matter what whether you're flipping a property, whether you're buying a rental property, or even if you're buying a property for yourself to go ahead and move into and live in. And that is ultimately to run the numbers, okay? And you wanna run them like three times, okay? You wanna run every single number that you can possibly run. So what exactly am I talking about when I say running the numbers? And what I'm really talking about when I say running the numbers, I'm saying you really wanna look at the property and you wanna run pretty much every number you can run, okay? But more importantly, if you're buying a property, uh, let's just say, you're buying a property maybe a little bit below market value. And maybe that said property uh, needs a little bit of renovation before you actually go ahead and you rent it out. Then you really want to look at the property and you want to say, okay, you know, how much renovation does it need, right? Do I need to do new paint? Do I need to do new carpet? Do I need to do you know, like all new like tile flooring or wood flooring? You know, am I moving any like major walls around, which I probably wouldn't recommend by the way, on your first rental property, maybe not even your first couple of rental properties, but really looking at it and saying, you know, what all am I gonna have to do to the house, right? Do I have to update the bathrooms? Do I have to update the kitchen? You know, maybe you've gotta do updated landscaping, okay? You know, those costs are gonna, you know, really factor in to your overall profitability of the rental property. So for example, I just bought a property in Tempe, Arizona for $267,000, okay? The property needed about $25,000 to $30,000 worth of work. Now, once I went ahead and renovated the property with, again, about twenty-five to 30000 the property then was basically instantaneously worth about $350,000 to $360,000. So, you know, I ran my numbers multiple times and I knew that I was getting the property up way below market value so that I was gonna be able to put that amount of money into the property and ultimately I wouldn't be like over budget, right? And I still had instant equity day one. And that is obviously like one of the most important things that you're gonna do, right? And then the next thing after that is making sure that you're not going over budget on any renovation costs or anything. You wanna make sure that you've looked at all the rental rates in the area. So you wanna look at, okay, you know, obviously you chose a good location and you really studied the market, but you know, what is what are properties renting for in that area? You know, for us, you know, that we saw the properties are renting for anywhere between eight and $2,000. And then what I really wanted to look at was I wanted to say, okay, how much is my monthly payment gonna be, right? You typically have like your, what they call your PITI, right? Which is your principal, your interest, your taxes and your insurance. So all of that combined, you wanna make sure that those numbers are less than overall what you can get in rent. And if you don't run these numbers like right off the bat, then you could get stuck in a situation where your renter or your tenant is not even covering the total cost of you owning the house. And then if the market were to do something weird or the market were to go down or trend downwards, then you could end up 
being stuck in a bad situation and that is ultimately the last thing that you want. So just make sure that you run your numbers and you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And a lot of people will tell you in the real estate industry that you wanna make sure that you have additional cash flow on top of your total expenses. And also they'll tell you, you wanna factor in things like a vacancy rate, right? Because over the next, you know, five or 10 years or 15 or even 30 years, you gotta figure that there might not always be a tenant in there every single month on the month. So, you know, when you average that out over time, that's what they consider to be your vacancy rate. So you can Google this stuff and you can look it up to figure out what a, maybe a normal vacancy rate would look like in that area. And also, you know, factor some other things in like what the real estate market is doing and stuff like that. But then also factoring in your maintenance and your repair costs on said property. And again, I like to typically average that out over the long haul, right? So I figure, okay, you know, maybe my repair and maintenance costs are, you know, maybe a hundred dollars a month, uh, you know, factored in over the long haul because maybe every decade I've got to replace the air conditioner. I've got to, you know, go in and I've got to repaint it or put new carpet in or whatever. And I'll factor that in over the long term. And so once you factor all of that in, you typically want to make sure that you build in a little bit of cash flow. And that ultimately is how you can create that passive income uh, when buying rental properties, which is why everybody wants to get into real estate aside from the appreciation benefits and the depreciation benefits. And a couple of other things that you also get with owning real estate. So run your numbers a hundred times over again, okay? You can never run your numbers enough times. And that leads me right into point number five, which is to understand all of your financing options. Because if you're looking at a property below market value, and maybe you went out and you, you know, marketed to some sellers even, you didn't buy a property that was on the market. Well, typically, uh, the property is gonna need a little bit of work, right? It might need to be renovated. You might have to go in and, and refurbish the, the kitchen cabinets and restain them or repaint them or replace the carpet or the flooring, maybe some ceiling fans, some fixtures, stuff like that. And ultimately, uh, what might make a lot of sense, and again, this is just uh, understanding your financing options, right? So uh, definitely uh, talk to whoever you gotta talk to. Talk to a good lender. Talk to, uh, obviously, your attorney, your CPA. You know, I'm definitely not uh, doing any of that, but you know, you might wanna go ahead and get hard hard or private money. Because if you get hard or private money right out of the get-go, you know, they'll typically finance some of your renovation costs for you. And what that'll allow you to do is to go ahead and get that done very quickly and potentially not out of pocket at all. And then what you can do is you can refinance into a conventional or an FHA mortgage. So understanding your financing options are obviously very crucial when it comes to looking at a rental property, because you have to understand, you know, what type of financing can I qualify for? And this goes back to having good credit, right? You know, can you get an FHA loan? Probably not because uh, you're not gonna be occupying the property, right? Now, if you were gonna house hack and you were gonna buy a, a duplex or a triplex or a quadplex, then you could definitely do an FHA loan, live in one of the units, get tenants in the other units, and then you could house hack. But if you're buying a single family residence, then you probably have to get a conventional loan, okay? What does the interest rate look like on that, right? What are interest rates, depending on when you're watching the video, interest rates are at an all-time low right now. So really understanding all of that very thoroughly, right? And understanding exactly what that looks and feels like. That way you can kind of combine running your numbers on the actual property itself with all of your financing options. And you can kind of run all of those numbers together, right? And you can really look at it as a whole and say, okay, you know, I'm buying the property at X, it'll be worth uh, y, when I'm all finished with it, it needs X amount of work. Uh, rental rates are, are X. And ultimately, here's what I'm gonna do in terms of financing, right? And then obviously, you're focused on the location and everything else. And ultimately, when you do that level of due diligence, it's going to allow you to make sure that you're not ending up in a situation that you didn't wanna be in. And that is the worst thing in the world, right? Is ending up in a situation, especially when you're investing. You know, investing always carries a risk, right? But you know, you can mitigate that risk by just being smart and doing your due diligence and running your numbers and doing everything that we talked about in the video. So look, uh, hopefully that helps you when it comes to buying a rental property. I know for a fact that uh, you know some of the information that I talked about today is information that I really wish when I started uh, in real estate, you know, about six or seven years ago that people would have told me. So I would really appreciate it if you would take just a quick moment, okay, and just smash the like button if you haven't already. Definitely drop a comment down below and let me know, you know, what questions do you have? What didn't I answer? I would love to communicate with you down there. I really appreciate you for watching the video. I've got a couple of really good links 
links in the description uh, of how I actually find a lot of my real estate deals, a lot of my off-market deals, and everything of that sort. So definitely check that out. And if you haven't already, I also have a podcast. I would love if you'd check that out as well. Also, link in the description, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.